This is a copy of the letter that I sent to President Trump, November 21st, 2019. Dear Mr. President Donald J. Trump, Greetings. If you are holding this letter in your hands, that means that it was not intercepted. That's good. My name is Nisin R. Lopez. I'm a 43-year-old Cuban-American artist based in Cutler Bay, Florida. I am contacting you in order to denounce a hideous crime that is being perpetrated against me here in USA, contract stalking and electronic harassment sponsored by corrupt folks in positions of power. Yes, I am a watch-listed individual, a silent hit. I am an unwilling participant in an experimental government torture program. I've been experiencing organized harassment sponsored by the authorities since January of 2011 until the present. This thing ruined my life. You might be saying to yourself, what exactly is organized harassment? Well, this is not easy to explain. Covert harassment, organized group stalking, community-based mobbing, or managed aggression is pretty much a form of political repression, extrajudicial punishment. Organized stalking is a secret program of the U.S. government designed to destroy targeted individuals emotionally and psychologically through dark neurolinguistic programming and negative aversive stimuli, trauma-based conditioning. We're talking here about a multi-layered interagency program. Law enforcement is behind this, the intelligence community is behind this, and contractors are behind this as well. Yes, we're talking here about the Fusion Center Crime Syndicate, DHS, the FBI, the high-tech militarized police, and the private sector. How does the harassment work? Well, we're talking here about an a heavy, overwhelming, multi-layered vigilante stalking. This is done to me every single time I go out into the general public, 365 days a year. The unjust, systematic harassment is done by a group of people in an organized fashion, using unethical means to torment, preoccupy, agitate, intimidate, and terrorize the isolated victim all the time, no matter where he goes. I'm talking about acts of provocation that are very well camouflaged, street theater, invasion of space, intercepts, noise campaigns, vulgar, vulgar gest gestures, mimicking, directed conversations, engineered collisions, orchestrated synchronicities, entrapment, etc. Obstruction of daily activities based on choice reference patterns. They know your precise coordinates at all times. You are under constant surveillance. The target is exposed to a stressor outside the range of usual human experience. He is kept in a state of anxiety and hypervigilance, in a state of functional disorientation, until he finally breaks down after years of indescribable psychological abuse. Basically, the harassment is meant to create a toxic artificial external reality. They want to drive you insane. You know, most victims of this program end up homeless in jail or in psychiatric institutions, isolated, with no support system, relationships destroyed. So now, who are the agent provocateurs recruited by the authorities that constantly harass the targeted citizen in an organized fashion? They are called surveillance role players or citizens on patrol. They believe they are patriots and heroes serving a noble cause. They come from all types of social backgrounds. These mindless automatons are brainwashed into believing that the target is a really bad person, a terrorist, a murderer, a sex offender, a wife beater, a drug trafficker, a thief, etc a professional defamation campaign. These perps are enlisted through community programs such as InfraGuard, Citizen Corps, and Neighborhood Watch. They are compensated with cash and gift cards. We're talking here about a clandestine civil military operation. <clears throat> there is no doubt that, a, that the command station for organized talking is the Fusion Center. This is obvious. The primary multi-agency intelligence sharing network 
in Florida is the Florida Fusion Center, Florida Department of Law Enforcement, which is located in Tallahassee. And the fusion center that is the closest to me is the Homeland Security Bureau, Southeast Florida Fusion Center, which happens to be the Fred Taylor headquarters for the Miami-Dade Police Department. This centralized uh, technology center has different operational sections. Overall, contract stocking is psychological warfare, a secret illegal long-term unconstitutional surveillance program designed to neutralize outspoken, politically incorrect free thinkers that are designated as enemies of the state, even if they are just innocent, harmless, law-abiding citizens that pose no real threat to anyone. Now, in case you wonder, they targeted me for the following reasons. In 2009, I had a verbal argument, you know, nothing out of this world, with a community leader that is very well connected, you know, a guy with friends in law enforcement. This transpired some time after I registered a controversial book in the Library of Congress. The final version of that book was re-registered in the Library of Congress on November 21st, 2017. Also, in late 2009, I made a politically incorrect presentation in Miami-Dade College Hialeah campus. I openly stated that September 11th was an inside job. On early 2010, they kicked me out of Miami-Dade College under false accusation. They portrayed me as a terrorist. They, they basically painted me as an anti-American. So you know what happened to freedom of speech, you know? Miami-Dade College threat assessment team, they reported me either to the Department of Holland Security or to the FBI. I know for a fact that they spoke to the Hialeah police. The authorities opened an investigation. In 2009, they visited some of my closest friends and forced them to collaborate in covert operations, exposing me to situational and conversational uh, scenarios to record me saying something out of line. These friends of mine felt threatened by the presence of the authorities. They couldn't tell me what was happening, and at the same time, they decided that they needed to get rid of me somehow. They all knew I had been placed in a blacklist officially. They figured, this guy must never know that we conspired against him. He must never find out that we collaborated with the police. The so-called authorities, they couldn't find anything wrong with me. No criminal record, no drugs, no alcohol, no cigarettes, no drama, nothing. Just a guy into old school heavy metal rock. They decided to create a fake profile that would make me look like a deranged psychopath. Since I'm into death metal, horror films, and controversial literature. They would portray me as a per perverted serial killer type just because they could. They have the power and people, will, and people believe whatever they say. They are experts when it comes to character assassination. You know, the targeted individual program is a character assassination program. They want to discredit you. So, on January of 2011, I began experiencing heavy, overwhelming, multi-layered, coordinated stalking. The harassment was very, very, very intense, unbearable. I found myself in a, in a virtual concentration camp. On late December 2012, I ended up in a psych ward, you know, in really bad shape. This is what they wanted. You know, as part of the program, you know, they, they, they want you to end up in a psychiatric institution to discredit you. So here's, here's what this all comes down to. I've, I've never done shit to anyone, but the government is working over time in order to put me in jail under a false narrative. They're going around spreading lies brainwashing people into believing that I am a murderous sexual predator. Where, where is the tangible, verifiable evidence supporting these wild allegations? If their claims are true, why don't they arrest me? They harass, isolate, and terrorize innocent people, but they protect criminals like the Hialeah cop Jesus Jesse Menocal Jr., who sexually abused a 17-year-old girl a few years back. This happened in Hialeah, Miami, Florida. 
How come they don't put this guy in the targeted individual program and force him into involuntary celibacy? Aren't they vigilante hunters trying to make the world a better place? Mr. Menocal, he's the, he's the son of a retired police chief. <laughs> that explains everything, you know. Ese es de los ellos, ese, es, ese es el bueno. It is clear to me that these people in law enforcement and the intelligence community are crooked for them, sure. So, you know, and then I say this. So, the leader of clandestine operations in the CIA, Elizabeth Kimber, she doesn't know anything about this nasty mind control behavioral modification program. General John W. Raymond, commander of the Air Force Space Command, he doesn't know anything about satellite weaponry, uh, sa sa satellite weaponry and microwave bullets. The director of the Defense Intelligence Agency, Robert P. Ashley, he doesn't know anything about remote neuro monitoring and synthetic telepathy. The principal deputy director of national intelligence, Susan M. Gordon, she doesn't know that targeted individuals are being tortured with directed energy weapons forced to lash out. The director of the National Security Agency, Paul M. Nakason, he doesn't know anything about signals, intelligence, EMF scanning networks, you know. The Assistant Attorney General of the National Security Division, John Charles Demers of the Department of Justice. He doesn't know anything about this legalized uh, lawlessness. The director of the FBI's terrorist screening center, Charles H. Cable. He doesn't know this horrendous surveillance abuse is taking place. The Undersecretary of Homeland Security for Intelligence and Analysis, David J. Glow. He doesn't know anything about these black ops. Of course, they all know this is going on. This is an unacknowledged special access program funded by the CIA, a military neuroscience uh, experiment. They spend approximately a million dollars a year on each subject, on each targeted individual. They got mainstream media on a leash so that they don't spill the beans. The media outlets don't have a problem legitimizing the stories of U.S. diplomats harassed with microwave weapons in Cuba and in China. Yet, they refuse to validate the testimony of thousands of U.S. citizens that are being tortured with organized talking and electronic assaults. The puppet masters behind this personality disintegration program will do anything in order to justify a multi-billion dollar national security counterterrorism, corporate military intelligence police state complex. Multi-billion or multi-trillion? Who knows, you know? I know for a fact that weapons manufacturers like Lockheed, Lockheed Martin benefit from this. One thing I do know for sure, this is a human rights injustice beyond words. These are war crimes. So, Mr. President, I would like for you to think about something. The shadow government, deep state criminal cabal, is torturing me with classified military technology. They have me on remote neural monitoring. I've been implanted with highly advanced nanotechnology that resonates with my biofrequency, so they have access to my unique brain signature. This is how they know my precise coordinates at all times. This means that a guy sitting in front of a monitor in the RTCC section of the Homeland Security Bureau Southeast Florida Fusion Center can see my decoded thoughts in real time, audio visual info in digital format. Not only that, handlers can also implant words, phrases, images, impulses, and videos into my psyche, especially when I'm asleep. This is called artificial telepathy. They do this to me every night, 365 days a year, a mind rape operation. They implant images of unnatural things, you know. Their, their long-term goal is to modify me against my will and to turn me into an abomination. 
a bizarre re-education strategy, you know, induced atrophy. All my psychic data is uploaded into their AI supercomputer that predicts behavior based on past choices. Basically, I'm a guinea pig, an expendable biospecimen in a secret military experiment, EEG heterodyning, you know, that's electroencephalogram heterodyning, mind cloning. And then I continue saying this. If they are doing this to me and I am a nobody, because I mean technically I'm a nobody, I'm just an average uh, citizen. If they are doing this to me and I am a nobody, what's stopping the CIA from spying on your very thoughts, Mr. President? You know, think about it. You're the President of the United States, the most powerful man in the world. All they really need in order to put you on remote neuro monitoring is a sample of your DNA. They implant the human test subject with highly advanced nanotech. Once they get that DNA sample, they have access to your unique brain signature, which operates as an email address, pretty much, biotelemetry, transmitter, receiver, brain to computer interface, integration completion. They have a digital map of your brain, computer generated brain mapping. This futuristic technology of DARPA flavor is so powerful that they can even use it to control sleep patterns. They can deprive you of sleep if they want to. They can inflict pain in any part of the body. They can also eliminate a person with an artificial heart attack that generates no forensic evidence. So we're talking here about an otherworldly technology that is years ahead of what people know. Black magic at the governmental level, you know, minority report type of shit, you know. Mr. President, the corrupt folks behind this interagency program must be exposed. You know, they are trafficking the brain, the brainwave signatures of illegally targeted citizens. Keep in mind that there are thousands of targeted individuals in USA. I'm not the only one. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. President. I apologize for any inconvenience. Please help me. Bye. Signed. Mr. Nissin R. Lopez, Truth Seeker. Wish me luck.